Well, thank you, Jeanette. And, and tomorrow will mark the one year anniversary of one of the worst days that we've had in the history of Florida, the massacre of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Uh, many of the families affected by that, uh, of course, are here today. Um, I think one of the things that came out of that was really an unprecedented effort by folks who had had their lives shattered to take action uh, so that this would not happen in the future. And uh, I'm proud to uh, say today that earlier today, I issued an executive order um, implementing uh, a number of the recommendations that I have the authority to implement through executive action of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission. Some of these uh, should have been done earlier. And so we're making sure our Department of Education and relevant agencies are moving uh, full steam ahead on that. And that's really a testament to some of the folks standing behind me uh, who worked very, very hard um, on that. Uh, and so I think that that executive order uh, will, will make a difference. The second thing I announced today is if you look at how law enforcement typically handles criminal activity, most investigations tend to be more reactive. Someone does something, you then investigate, try to hold them accountable. Uh, there are certain areas where the posture, the default posture is being proactive. Uh, in Florida, with the Federal Florida Department of Law Enforcement, they take a proactive posture to protect the governor, me and my wife, from, from any threats. Uh, the U.S. Secret Service takes a proactive posture against threats to high public officials at the federal level, including the President of the United States. Um, FDLE has started to move forward on a threat assessment model for mass violence. Um, and I think that when you see some of the things that have happened, not just at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, but through other parts of our state and country, a lot of times people who are committing mass violence, uh, this is not a secret that this is something that could happen. Um, and so if you're proactive, if you're approaching it almost like an intelligence operation, you have an opportunity to have an intervention before this happens. And so uh, I've told FDLE, to beef up these efforts. Uh, we're going to have to train more people uh, to, to think this way. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a huge uh, requirement that local folks do it. But at the state level, uh, we need to be proactive. And so we're going to move forward on that. It will take some time to get that to where we need to do. But my hope would be that Florida would really be a leader um, in, in a proactive posture when it comes to really discrete type of horrific crimes, these mass uh, killings, uh, to, to, to get ahead of it. Uh, the guy from SunTrust in Sebring just recently was texting his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend saying he was going to kill innocent people. Uh, and if you go to Indiana, and we're still investigating some of that, there were all kind of warning signs in Indiana throughout his entire life. So let's heed these warning signs, and let's have uh, uh, apparatus in place that can take action. Now, today, my final announcement, um, we were here in Broward about a month ago with many of the, many of the families uh, to try to bring accountability to the sheriff's office. Uh, I think that we have done that. I think the sheriff's office is, is going in a much better direction, and I know many of the families are pleased at the progress that's been made. Uh, many also have had grave concerns with the school board and the superintendent of the school district here. Um, I've been asked to potentially suspend the superintendent, as just as I did the sheriff. Um, the problem is, is that I don't have the authority to do that for an official who is appointed. Um, I also was asked maybe look into some of the school board members who are supporting kind of the old regime and have been resistant to change. And I looked at that, and yes, they are elected, but um, it's not clear to me that having policy disputes would be a reason to exercise that power. And I'm also mindful of the fact that there was just an election just last year where many of these issues were the foremost issues in the campaign, and the, the, the voters of this county chose to return some of those school board members or elect some with that posture. Uh, so I was not convinced that I had the authority, uh, given the facts, to suspend. But I also was mindful of the fact, having just had an election, when these were all very live issues, may not be an appropriate use. So uh, what we are doing today is announcing uh, that I am, and I think, at the end of the day, I want accountability looking backwards, but I also want to protect Floridians moving forward. And so the best tool that we have to bring accountability, but also move forward in a better way, um, is a petition that I filed today with the Florida Supreme Court uh, for a statewide grand jury. 
uh, to look into not only the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, incident, uh, but how this school district here and other school districts uh, have handled money for security, have handled all of these issues that impact the safety uh, of our schools. It's not limited to Broward County. It is multi-jurisdictional, uh, but I think it's something that is warranted. I think it's something that may lead to potential um, uh, accountability measures by a grand jury, but it could also lead to, and I think it will, lead to recommendations about what some of the various school districts could do better. Uh, they could provide information to the state of Florida, and uh, we can then take action as people on the local can take action. Now, the difference between a statewide grand jury and something like the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission is this statewide grand jury will have a full bore subpoena power. They will be able to compel witnesses. It will be able to compel documents uh, in a way that the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission was just not able to do. The mandate is also broader. It's not just looking at this, but how this district and other districts have handled matters relating to school security. And I think ultimately uh, having that broader mandate will be better for us in terms uh, of getting the truth, holding people accountable, and then making sure we're going forward in a posture that is most conducive to public safety.